Oh, what's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back. Uh, today we're working on OpenGL visualization of a diff algorithm. So we've kind of taken like a few steps to get here. Um, we're working kind of on our Git GUI. His name is Spit for Spherophoria's Git. Um, and one of the things that this guy does is he has like, you know, he shows things that changed in a commit. Uh, and we track these things ourselves because uh, it gives us more control and because it's like fun to implement stuff and learn, right? Uh, great, we have a diff tool. Uh, we implemented this like version of Myers diff algorithm, uh, which is like the diff algorithm that everyone uses. Uh, and the problem is that he runs in like quadratic memory space. So in like, if you're as, as the number of lines in your files that you're diffing gets like really large, your memory usage scales exponentially and quadratically exponentially, I think is X is in the exponent here. I'm saying it's X in the not exponent, but squared anyways. So you can get into the case where you have like a reasonable file on your disc, uh, but it takes up, it tries to use like a terabyte or uh, like multi hundred gigabytes of RAM. Not great. So we started looking at this like linear version of the algorithm, which uh, is like documented online. I've been following this blog post, Myers diff algorithm. Uh, not this one, this one. I've been like, this guy does like a good breakdown, James Coughlin, and you know, his his his, his explanation basically says, um, you have some series, like some two things that you're trying to diff. You have this like thing at the top and this thing down the side thing at the top is like the source string and the thing at the bottom is the destination string polynomial time that sounds kind of correct yeah <laughs> i think quadratic is just a specialization of polynomial though so i think that's fine uh so say we have like the string like one two three four and we're trying to get to one two four three right you you start with one two three four and in order to get there you say you look at the one and you go oh there's a one in the destination we're fine there's a two. Oh, there's a two in the destination we're fine you see a three and you're like oh well the th there's not a th three in the destination string so i'll delete it and then you see this four and you're like okay there the four lines up and you add three and you can like visualize this by kind of doing like one two three four one two four three this is our like our visualization thing going here and we show basically uh diagonal lines means that they're it, at that point in the string, they're in both the source and the destination. Vertical lines are trans transitions towards the finished product, and horizontal are trans transitions along the start product. So the idea here is when you move diagonally, nothing changes. When you move to the right, because you're making you're moving through the source and not the destination, you're deleting a character. And when you move vertically, you are adding a character. Um, and so we got to this point where you can do this trick where you run this like algorithm forwards and backwards at the same time. You remember nothing. You just kind of like see where they smash into each other. So if I do this, you can kind of see like, oh, these guys are kind of like walking this graph. We're not going to talk too much about like how the graph is being walked right now. We've covered that in other videos. So if you want to, uh, there, like if you click the YouTube link in the Twitch description, there will be some playlist about Git GUI. And in the past there, we've talked about a little bit more detail about what's going on here. Uh, but at some point, these guys will collide. And so what this like linear version does is it says, okay, I'll remember nothing, but I'll find, I'll remember where they collide. And so they collide here, and then you can just keep breaking down the problem until you're like under some memory limit. And then you can do like a graph walk where you're doing like a breadth first search to find the end or find like the path. Uh, just to clarify, the reason why it's n squared is because uh, when you're doing a breadth first search, you have to remember the path in every single branch until you get to the end because you don't know which branch is going to get to the end first. Okay. So that's the background. We have this visualization working great. Um, but we were in this case where we like tested this guy uh, in our Git GUI last stream, and it was still taking up like way too much RAM, like just way, way more than I think is reasonable. And I found so far that like visualizing is like a very, very useful way to like understand what's happening. Surely there's like you know, we could just add some logs and root cause that way, but uh, visual is more fun, and like I think that you like can gain intuition faster. And so I want to say like, okay, let's like look at the actual case where it's taking up a gig of RAM and try to figure out what that why that's happening. And the problem is is that our current rendering solution uh, does not 
scale well. We're using this like GUI library in Rust, eGUI, and we're using this like API. Let's see if we can pull it up. Uh, let's close this, exit, and let's go into our like diff viz main, and we can look at like painter. We're using this like painter guy, and we're doing stuff on him like, hey, eGUI, could you draw this line segment in this area, for example? Or like, could you draw a circle? Let's look at circle filled. And if we, hopefully my language server is up. Yep. But my jump to definition is not jumping to definition. Is he just like railing CPU right now while he scans? Yeah. Rust analyzer, 100%. So we need to give him a second to work. Oh, there we go. Figured it. He figured it out. And what this painter is actually doing is he's like, well, he's calling this like self-add and a circle shape. And that's adding something to like some painter list. And you can like look at this like painter list and say, well, who calls this guy? And I think eventually I I track this down into he pushes into like a painter list who is e paint list vector shape I don't remember exactly where the path was but basically I found that uh, when you're asking for stuff in eGUI to draw uh, you draw onto this graphics layer oh the graphics layer sounds familiar where Hold on, hold on. I, I think we can get we can we can find it. We can find it. We can find it. So here he's pushing to this guy. And we can like No, I'm I'm not gonna find it quickly enough. But basically I found that he doesn't get called, he doesn't actually draw anything until the end of the frame. And so what happens is if you draw if you queue up, like I want to draw like a fuck ton of circles, it'll go, okay, let me just like write down all those circles, and that ends up taking up also like just too much RAM. Uh, for us to like do that visualization using our current technique. So what I'm thinking is uh, we can render the graph ourselves. We won't need to use eGUI. We can do something that renders immediately and that it can like scale quite well. So we can use something like we can try to do like an OpenGL rendering of the thing. Um, there are probably other ways that we could get around this, right? You could only render like a subset of the graph at any given time. Uh, but I think that the OpenGL thing is going to be fun. So we're just going to go that way. So I think plan of action is uh, to try to get like some sort of uh, OpenGL triangle Tron in our thing at all. Uh, then we're going to try to like draw the circles, draw the lines, then like try to update with algorithm progress. And uh, then once we can do that, then we can draw like our like big ass big graph and implement some sort of like panning and zooming. Because presumably we're gonna have so much on there that if you try to zoom out all the way and look at everything, it's not gonna be useful. So we're gonna be able to need to like scroll and pan around or whatever. Uh, that's fine, that's the plan. So I think let's get moving. So if I remember correctly, eGUI has support for all of like using OpenGL like this already. And there should be some example in here Custom 3D Glow sounds promising. And this guy, he constructs some eGUI application. He does like custom painting. Custom painting creates like an eGUI glow callback. Right, right, right. Rotating triangle. Ah, yes, yes, yes. And so here, here is the like OpenGL code that goes along with this. So we can probably use this as like our example um just for those of you who have not done OpenGL before which is probably i imagine a lot of people because why would you um the way that this thing is set up uh OpenGL in general post like i think version three or four is set up so that you kind of have like these like blocks so you have like these things called like shaders this one's called vertex shader, and then you have like fragment shader. Um, and the idea is you give him like a list of like some inputs. VBO, VAO, am I hired? Perfect. Yeah, you've done, you, <laughs> you've got the words down. Uh, you give him like a list of things. And generally, like a common thing that you might want to put in here is like X, Y, Z position, because this is like a 3D API. So each guy's, each of these guys have F X, Y, and Z. And then you write some program called like your vertex shader. And he's going to act on each of these things in the list. Um, you, you kind of like can customize what goes in there. But in this example, he's kind of like hard coding the list here. But the idea is that you have some function main and he runs on each point. 
So you can do stuff like, like if you want to zoom in, you can take all of the points in this like grid and you can convert them into screen space and like maybe like push them away from each other so they get look like they get farther apart. You can apply like 3D transforms in them so you can like move the camera around, stuff like that. Uh, then this guy gets forward to like the fragment shader and the, I, I believe, I'm not 100% on this, but I think that the fragment shader runs for each pixel on the screen. So you like do some conversion and you say, okay, now we're in screen space. This is zero. This is one. And I'm going to run for each pixel. And you can like interpolate data. So if you were to like draw a triangle, you'd have like one point here, one point here, and one point here. And then the fragment shader would run for like each point in the triangle. And you can like do some like colorizing and stuff like that. So that's the background. So probably what we're going to do is we're probably going to end up like filling this buffer with all of the like points on our grid. Um... And then probably we'll just have like a really simple fucking fragment shader that just colors whatever color we want to. Um, and then we'll probably add like a second buffer to draw like all of the lines on our grid. So we have like, you know, circles, circle, 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 whatever. And then we have like lines between them that we're going to have to like render in as well. And then we are also going to have like the algorithm path rendered in. So I'll probably we'll be able to reuse some code there. I'm not, I haven't really thought about it too hard. I'm just, giving the background needed geometry shader and shambles i can't remember is geometry shader like a separate thing or is it just a, like the vertex shader geometry shader i may maybe has the ability to add geometry if i remember correctly so like the different like vertex shaders let you do any transformations on the list of vertices you already have but the geometry shader lets you add in new vertices if you want yeah, 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 I see, yeah, yeah, so they have emit vertex, nice, yes, yes, yes. But, uh, I think that this is, like, the, this is, like, the minimal program. You can't, you can't not have a fragment shader, you can't not have a vertex shader, if I remember correctly, everything else is optional. Uh, okay. So, I guess, I guess we should just pull in this code here. We'll kind of copy whatever the fuck they are doing in their example and then we can adjust accordingly for ourselves so let's see we have our diff viz thing and we're going to need to do some sort of like impl diff viz and we can just copy paste oops uh copy paste this into here like this and then all of this like rotating triangle stuff we're going to need to pull in. So they have like rotating triangle is a rotating triangle. And here when they construct him, they have to create this guy. So we do this. Boom, boom. And then we have to like copy paste, I guess, their whole implementation of rotating triangle. Okay. Which I think is just this. Do we compile? We're missing some value GL. So where does GL come from? Let GL equals. Ah, so they pull it out of the context. So we can probably do that here. Boom, boom, boom. And then we need to do some imports. So we need arc and mutex now. Yeah, you don't really mess with geometry shaders until unless you have some special cases. I mean, like, you can definitely see the value of them, right? Uh, they they get they got thrown in in Blender somewhat recently, in, like the past couple of years, and the, you can do some like crazy shit with them. It like programmatically generating geometry is like very very valuable. Uh, but yeah, I guess you don't have to do it all the time. Uh, we're missing angle, so this guy comes in here. He's got cell angle is an F32. Okay. Uh, so I guess here we'll just start at zero. And then here somewhere they're going to ask to draw the triangle. So I guess we are also going to have to draw the triangle and we'll do it. I guess we'll just kind of nuke all of the code that we had before. And we will just kind of do what they're doing in their example and then return early. Uh, okay. So on declared create our module glow so we need to use eframe glow okay and 
there's some like construction issues that we fucked up. So I guess we just want to do this and then here we just forgot to unwrap the lock. How come this isn't happening in their example? Like, is this not, like, this lock function should return a result, so shouldn't they be in trouble here? Am I high? Whatever. I mean, I guess I know that it's like this, but I just don't understand why it's not a problem for them. But whatever. So hopefully we see our triangle here and we can rotate it. Okay, we're chilling. So this is all, like we have some open GL code working in here. And so I guess we're kind of done. Hello triangle. And now we have to, maybe uh, we want to start kind of like splitting out some code the way we want to see it. So I want to like split out GLSL or shaders into own files. I don't like it when they we like inline code directly in Rust, so let's maybe pull, make a diff viz resource folder and then maybe we make der diff viz res glsl or something um, and then we could do something like e diff viz res uh, and probably at some point these are going to become like multiple different we're gonna have probably multiple vertex shaders maybe maybe multiple fragment shaders i don't know yet so but for now we'll just make vertex glsl and we'll take all of this shit and shove it in here uh like this why is this formatting fucked what the fuck is happening set shift width equals four tab stop equals four expand tab whoa okay uh, there we go. Is that right? That looks, I think, kind of right. Yeah, there we go. And then diff viz res fragment DLSL. We want to pull out the fragment shader. Yoinkies. There we go. And then I think that here they were, uh, you can use, like, at the beginning of your shaders, you have to specify what version of OpenGL you want to use. So I guess we'll just kind of yoink. We'll kind of say, we'll always use 300ES. I can't remember. I think it's valid to use this in our context. It's like a little less featureful than the full spec, but I think we don't need it. I don't know. We can always change this later. And then here they just shove the, shade, the version at the top. Yeah, okay. I think that's... I think actually this has to be like this, not in quotes. And then we'll get rid of this. I don't like their like shader version here. Here we will say let vertex shader source equal to include stir. I don't know if this is supposed to be string or bytes, but we'll find out. And this comes from res, glsl, vertex, glsl. Really? No source res GLSL? Did I fuck this up? Diff viz source res GLSL vertex. Ver oh, did I not save them? I might not have saved them. Oh, it's because I didn't put them in the GLSL folder. Okay. Uh, I'll move them later. It's fine. It's fine. So now fragment is frag glsl and then we can delete all of this what's your day job like what do you do um right now i have no day job i'm taking a little bit of a breaky um but before i worked on security camera firmware for a little bit which was pretty fun um kind of like they're like they're like here's a board with a system on a chip on it uh and like some like 
digital signal processing stuff, some like FPGAs, and like they're like, could you like make it boot and run and feed video streams onto the internet and like move motors and stuff, focus the camera, focus the lens, whatever, you know? So that was kind of fun. And then I worked at this like AI startup that did 3D, they called it pose estimation of like, you have like some object in like a manufacturing plant and you want like a robot to pick it up and put it in like a precise position on like some object say you're like manufacturing some assembly you have like a screw and you want to put the screw in in like a specific orientation on some spot so we would like train neural networks to use two images with like cameras with known positions and you could use that information, well, I guess the positions relative to each other and to the robot, and you could, like, use that to take two pictures, and then you could use neural networks to try to figure out, okay, so for each point in this image, what am I looking at? Like, where where is the object, essentially? Um, and, like, what's its orientation? It's pretty cool stuff, pretty cool stuff. Uh, okay. So, what we're doing here, we were trying to compile these shaders... Uh, so probably something like this. What is happening here? So this guy used to be shader source. This is a shader and a source. Oh, I see. I see. So here we're supposed to put in our, like, what the fuck? So here, what is this shader source? API. They're asking for shader source and then shader source again? Something about this feels wrong. So here we have shader sources that is the type Oh, I see. I see. So they created a shader with the type Oh, I just fucked up. I don't know. I just changed some code and then was like, why did I change it to something fucking stupid? And the answer is because I'm a fucking idiot. Okay, there we go. So here we baked in the types and then I think everything's compiling so we can cargo run this again. Um, Still chilling. Still chilling. Okay. And let's see if there's anything in here that they're doing that I don't really like. So they're creating a vertex and fragment shader. They're compiling it. Um, attaching it linking yep all of this is like typical OpenGL stuff then they say okay we've like created our shader program so we can like delete the stuff that we don't need anymore they have like a vertex array and then what are they doing with the vertex array they store it in themselves their own program okay then do they use this at all probably they like bind the vertex array somewhere yep they bind it here and then they draw arrays with triangles okay so let's try adjusting this um, to do kind of what we want. So maybe let's kind of start with uh, rendering triangles, triangles based off like user input data or something. Like we like right now they're vertex shader. They have like these like points for a triangle hard coded in there and so i would like to be able to like give the program vertices externally and so i need to like remember how to do that <laughs> uh i think it's like opengl there are these things that are like buffer objects array objects and element objects and i think it's I can't remember the difference between all of them, so I have to look them up. Vertex, uh, element, buffer, object is the one that I'm a little shaking on. Aha! Oh yeah, wait, no, I remember, I remember. Okay. So, your vertex shader is going to operate on some buffer, right? So, you can imagine that you have, like, like we said before, each one of these lines is going to have, like, X, Y, and Z in it. You might have, like, some, like, extra stuff, like, maybe, like... RGB data as well associated with each point. And so this is like not really what it looks like in memory, right? In memory, it's just going to look like this. It's going to look like number, 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 number. And 
in reality, these like lines aren't even really here. It's just kind of like contiguous memory. So if I remember correctly, this is your vertex buffer object, which you feed data in in like some formats. So you might say like the first, we're gonna have like four bytes here that are are like one float thirty two, and then you could have like another set of four byte bytes that is like another f32 and so this is going to be like your x is going to be your y and then if you wanted to store like your rgb as u8 so you could do that as well so you could have like rgb in like range 0 to 255 so if i remember correctly the vertex buffer is just like data the vertex array object is like you're kind of like descriptor of saying like what are these things so your vertex array object is going to say like x float <laughs> Y, y is float, R is U8, G is U8. And it's going to, like, say where these guys are, and then he's going to say, like, these guys are spaced out every, like, six bytes from each other, or, like, whatever this would have been. This is 4, 8, 11. He's going to say each of these guys are spaced out, like, 11 bytes from each other. Stuff like that. And then, if I remember correctly, uh, there's, like, an element buffer as well. We probably won't end up using this, but it's I'm just trying to, like, flush out my own memory so say you have like this fuck uh, let me copy copy paste right you have this thing here that you've kind of like described in your like vertex buffer and vertex array uh but if you're drawing like uh some like complex 3d object right he's going to be made up of like a bunch of triangles and what you'll notice is that each of these triangles is sharing multiple points, right? He's like this point here and this is in triangle one and two. So in order to like deduplicate data, if I remember correctly, I keep saying if I remember correctly because I wanted to be very clear that I'm like not sure what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but I think the element buffer is basically like you say, okay, so triangle one is going to be made up of index vertex one, zero, one, and two. So you put like zero, one, two here. And then he's you're going to say like, oh, but triangle two is made up of vertex one, two, and three. So you're going to have like another set of like one, two, three. And so your element buffer lets is like one layer higher up again where it lets you reuse these like vertex objects uh in like multiple faces i guess so i think that for our case we're going to be wanting to draw lines and circles and i think both of those are probably fine to just be using vertex buffers and vertex array objects so we can do something like vertex buffer object is a glow vertex buffer native buffer buffer probably Probably. And we're going to need to, like, allocate some buffer and put some data in it. And I don't really fucking remember how to do that at all. So, uh, GL bind buffer, I think, sounds familiar. Uh, I wonder if there's, like, a glow example that's, like, a little bit more... Um, none of these really look like they're going to have more of that but maybe we could look at the glow docs where glow is like just like this like open gl abstraction around um like for us that will work in like webgl context and like native linux context it kind of like abstracts away some of the like under the hood bullshit um where is like their functions is it under has context here we go so it's probably like we want to like create a buffer. Yeah, we create a buffer and then we bind a buffer and then you have to like put some data into it if I remember correctly. Uh, when I said four months ago, I didn't know how to code, but I still don't, but I'm having fun here. Hey man, thanks, appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I, maybe I want to look at like learn OpenGL Surely these guys will remind me what the sequence is. Um, bind buffer, right, buffer data. So they're like, they create some shaders, they create their vertex array object, they bind their buffer, they set the buffer data to some thing, and then they set their attributes on it. Okay, okay. I think I think we're starting to remember. So we're gonna say like let VBO is equal to GL create 
buffer. And then we're going to do something like bind the buffer. Uh, who is going to take in, hey, what type of buffer am I? And so I think GL array buffer is surely what we want. And then we give him our buffer. And I think he wants him wrapped in an optional because you can like bind zero, but like bind no buffers, but we were trying to bind some buffer. And then we say, hey, here are the vertices we want to upload. So I don't remember if this is like a copy onto the GPU or if the GPU might be like referencing this data. I think I've seen the case where like your integrated GPU is going to use this data directly. I think I've seen like seg faults because of that or because like the the copy is like async. So I think we need to like remember our vertices. So let's say that our vertices are just going to be a bunch of floats for now. And so here we're going to want to like populate those floats. So here we'll say, uh, let vertices is a sum vector. And I guess we want to be very careful here. We want to say this is a vec F32, but I guess we know that because we've stored it up here. Yep, okay. So this is going to be a float 32 vector. And I guess we'll just copy in what they put their vertices as here. Boom. So here we can say, hey, these are my three vertices. And then we can push them in. So what do we say? We say, hey, could we please attach some data? Buffer data U8 slice sounds right. So we're going to upload to some target, which uh, let's look at the API docs here. So the target is where we are writing it to. So this is like GL array buffer, right? So we're saying, hey, we are an array buffer. And the data is going to be vertices. And its usage is going to be either like static or dynamic. So like we're kind of like hinting to the GPU, hey, can you expect this stuff to stay the same forever? Or do you expect it to kind of like change over time? And so I guess we'll just say glow static draw. Oh, hey, another real stream. Auto follow. Hey, I'll take the auto follow. I'll take it. Um, now the problem here is that like these like vertices are being uploaded at, or like they're stored as a set of floats, uh, but this like API is expecting a bunch of U8. So I expect that there's probably some sort of like bullshit transmuting that we have to do when we use glow. Uh, I wonder if there's like glow examples, glow rust GitHub. Surely there are some examples in here, right? Oh, yeah. Hey, here we go. Hello. Hello. Do they do, like, any buffer binding? Uh, what API are we trying to use here? We're trying to use buffer data U8 slice. So maybe we want more of their how-to example. It might have more. Buffer data U8 slice. Here we go. So they have triangle vertices as a U8, which we, they do. Yeah, yeah. So they take their floats and they do some, like, bullshit casting here. GL buffer data blocks until the driver's read all the data it needs. You can free the memory after if you want. The seg fault you saw might have been due to usage with GL map buffer range has other requirements. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can I could definitely see the case where I would have uh, misattributed why I was seg faulting. I do remember I saw. I don't think I've ever used map buffer range, but I do like I do remember seeing something somewhere where I had a seg fault in the Mesa driver uploading data but it could be that i didn't wait it i might have just fucked up overall and maybe like gl buff maybe i freed before gl buffer data but having that confirmation from some stranger on the internet does make me feel better about it so let's try just saying fuck you we're gonna get rid of it uh and let's do this like bullshit casting 
Also, any of them stream? These are my people. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> we love Vim and Rust here. Okay. So here we can do something like uh, vertices U8 is vertices with some super, super unsafe casting. Uh-huh, okay. And looks like we're chilling. And so now what? We have this buffer, we've uploaded it, and we have to now set its like attributes. So vertex attribute pointer. And I have to remember what the hell this does. I have to remember what this does. GL vertex attrib pointer. Okay, so to find an array of generic vertex, blah, 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 specifies the index of the generic attribute to be modified. Ah, okay, so here I need to say probably something like, hey, at position zero, we have a float. And specifies the number of components per attribute. Okay, so here we can actually say, hey, these are going to be coming in in chunks of two. X, Y positions. Uh, so then we probably have to enable him. Yeah, this is going to look very similar to this. Uh, where they say, hey, there's two floats coming in at position zero. So zero is like uh, in your vertex shader. Oopsies, fuck. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, that's annoying. Uh, in your vertex shader, you're going to specify like, hey, I have some input that I'm expecting here. Uh, so we're going to call this vert. And this guy has, like, some ID associated with him. After you compile the program, you go, like, hey, where is this guy? And I think that you can even specify, like, hey, I want this thing to be at position zero if you want to get crazy. Uh, and then this, like, enable zero. The, we say, hey, we're going to be passing some data in, and this is where it is. Then we're saying, hey, we're these are floats. And then what are the other two arguments here? The other two arguments are normalized. So whether or not you expect these, like whether or not you want these to be pushed into like a zero to one range, which we don't want. We want them to be wherever they, where they are in our data. Stride is like how far apart from each other they are, right? So like you might have data that's like, if you had something like, you know, struct my data and you had like, vert pause is like you know three f32s and then like color is like some more floats and then you had like extra shit that's like i don't know so like just like 10 bytes wide or something you can say hey i'm gonna give you some vert vertices that are like rel relative to the start of my data uh but they're gonna be like spaced by my data segments of memory apart from each other. So that's why you have to specify all of that. It's flexible, but annoying. So 0, 2, that sounds right, where 2 is how many positions there are. Data type is going to be a glow float. And then we are not normalizing, and the stride is going to be... Stride is going to be eight bytes, I think, four for each of the two floats, and then the offset from the beginning of the buffer is going to be zero for each one. We bound the vertex array. Did we bind the vertex array? No, we didn't. So probably we also need to bind the vertex array, which I thought that you had to do before binding the buffer. But maybe not, but I'll just do it here anyway. Deal bind array. And here we'll bind the vertex array. Like this, I think. Something like this. So this this binding says, like, hey, when you do actions on this thing, make sure that like you're doing it on who I want you to. Like this is what what we're talking about. Also, there may be some extension useful in low power CPU GPU shared memory devices where you use the same ch side channel to promise you won't free the memory. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That I could see that as well. Never heard of such an extension, and I've looked around quite a bit, but it could exist. Yeah, I think you're probably attributing too much, like, competence to me, right? Probably what happened was I did something fucking stupid and misdiagnosed. If you're saying that you've looked around a bunch and you haven't seen anything like that, I'd be more confident that you're right and I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, okay, so we bind this guy, bind the buffer, assign the data, and then probably down here we like unbind the vertex ray. And do we unbind the buffer too? Maybe? I don't remember the like cleanup requirements here. And blindly just trying stuff with OpenGL is going to cause me large pain later, but you know, we move on. Okay, so let's say that we are not going to output a color anymore. I guess before we get too crazy here, let's make the adjustments that we want to make to this guy uh, first. So let's say I don't really care about the color anymore. We are just going to make the color white because that's going to make my life simpler. So this is going to be out color of uh, vec41111. He has no more input color. And let's just make sure that at the very least that still creates like a white triangle. Okay, white triangle, we're chilling. Now let's delete this colors thing. We don't need him anymore. And now instead of taking our vertex positions from this thing here, we're going to take it from our invert. And this is probably where the world's gonna start fucking up, but we will debug as we need to. So we could say in vec to invert like this. Okay, so now we've uploaded all this stuff and when we paint, we need to bind our vertex, right? And do we have to bind the buffer as well? Can't remember, but we might as well. I guess I'll have to do, I should actually look this fucking shit up because it's like, just like blindly guessing here is like really fucking stupid. Like, really stupid. But. Let's see. Okay, so now we're seeing nothing, and we have no fucking idea why, which is super sick, super cool. Um. Because this could have gone wrong pretty much anywhere. Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty much fucking anywhere. So... How do we debug? I think we forgot to enable the element. GL enable vertex array attribute zero. I think we have to do this. Attrib array, sorry, not array attrib. You want to bind the buffer before you call vertex attrib pointer? Uh, I thought I did. Did I not? Oh, yeah, I didn't. You're right. Good call. Good eye, good eye, good eye. Oh, no, wait. No, it's bound here. We bind the buffer. Then we upload the data. Then we set the attributes associated with that buffer. And then maybe... Let's just not unbind anything for now and see if that changes anything. And then maybe this rebind. I'm not really sure if that's supposed to be there. Nada. Nada. Okay. So this is the fun part of OpenGL. Is it's, just, it's just so fucking hard to debug. Um, what do I want to do here? What do I want to do here? Let's, let's look a little closer at this example. So here they add some points. Then they do this like casting thing. They bind the buffer and upload it data to it. So they do that here. Then they bind the vertex attribute. The vertex attributes they enable, and then they set the pointer. So they we bind, we enable, set the pointer, and let's just make sure we're using like the exact same calls here. Enable vertex attribute array, vertex attribute pointer. Yep. Okay, and so then where do they use these guys? They, they create the buffer somewhere. And then they draw arrays. So it doesn't seem like they're doing anything crazy. Doesn't seem like it. Although nothing's happening for us still, so surely we're doing something wrong. So they, I guess there could be some 
problems with like uh, let's think about this so igui itself is probably doing some like open gl interaction and It might be changing stuff. Uh, I'm not sure about OpenGL ES, but I'm thinking desktop OpenGL. I'm pretty sure Zero is not a valid VAO. Am I using Zero? Oh, did I... I don't think that's what I did. I thought that I was saying at index Zero, I want... Like, I think I'm binding VAO with some index. And then I'm saying, could you enable the input at position Zero? But I guess maybe this, like, position might not be well-defined. It also could be that, like, they're expecting version... Like, let's let's try to get... Let's just try to get closer and closer to this, like, example we're looking at. So, let's do version 330, just, just for shits and giggles. And I think that there's a way to specify in vertex shader position. I seem to remember there being some way to, like, specify that. Vertex, G GLSL, specify, vertex, uh, input, position. Layout qualifier? That sounds right. Layout location equals zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can say, like, layout location equals zero. Uh, and now he's crashing, which is nice, because all shaders must be in the same language, right? Because we changed this to 3.30, so we can look at uh, Fragment, GSL, and this should also be version 3.30. Okay. Nothing. I wish there was some way to easily, more easily debug this. Here's what we can do. Here's what we can do. Here's what we can do. Is we can use the input as the color. Maybe. Uh, that's not going to be super clean either. Not going to be super clean either. God. Have you done enabled any debug callbacks? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Message. GL debug message callback or whatever it is. Callback. Debug callback. Debug message callback. Yeah, that's worthwhile. That is worthwhile. Worthwhile indeed. So I think you can just do like GL debug message callback. I need all the help I can get, so it's stupid to not do this. So what is he taking? He's got U32, 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 U32. What what is this thing? Like what is GL debug message callback? What is this thing? address of the function and they expect like source type id severity so source type id severity and then message probably escape type so he will say tip instead Cannot borrow as mutable. Oh, interesting. So debug message callback requires mutable self. Okay. And then we can just like print line source tip ID severity message. Yeah, okay. And then here, I guess we have to as mute here. Cannot borrow data in arc as mutable. What is it bitching about? Cannot borrow CCGL as mutable. Oh, interesting. So I actually can't, can I just not set the debug callback? Is that, am I high? Cause that kind of sucks. Igui Glow. Let's see if this guy has like some sort of docs associated with him. 
Because surely this has come up. Surely. Paint up you want to look at here is painter. This is too high level, probably. Oi, oi, oi. Come on. Okay, is there some simpler thing we can do here? I guess, like, we could start. So he... Sorry, just brain melting. I'm just trying to think of, like, ways to bisect here. Okay, let's... Make sure that we're cleaning everything up. That we should be. And then let's let's double check. Um, I want to look up the vertex array and like buffer interaction. So like what? Open GL vertex array buffer. <laughs> uh here we go. Buffer objects, vertex specifications on the wiki. Um uh, vertex array object is a OpenGL object stores all state and supply vertex data. It stores the format of the vertex data as well as the buffer objects providing the vertex data arrays. Note that a VAO merely references the buffers. It does not copy or freeze the contents. If the reference buffers are modified later, those changes are seen when using the VAO. Okay, cool. As OpenGL objects, VAOs have the usual creations. So it does sound like it's kind of saying like, hey, I'm going to point to this buffer. But you don't. maybe you don't need to rebind it. These functions say the attribute index, blah, blah, blah. Let's say we do this. The first line binds buff one. Yep, that makes sense. Says the attribute index zero from but because that's the buffer that was bound to. The third line binds the buffer object zero to the GL array buffer binding. What does this do to the association between the zero and buff one? This is exactly what I was asking. Nothing. Changing the GL array buffer binding does nothing about the attribute zero. Only calls to VL attribute pointer can do that. Okay, so that's good information. So we should not have to do any like buffer binding it kind of sounds like although it might be useful to do so i guess we can also just try like moving some stuff around and see what happens so we have to undo this change to call mutable gl message callback because it's not working uh there's also the chance that we fucked up our attribute binding so here we said hey we are trying to bind two floats here. Buffer data U8 slice. He's got size of F32s. He's got some vertices that... Oh, here we didn't specify our type, which is kind of scary. Because maybe those are coming out as F64s. Who knows what it's... Fuck, man. I fucking... Fuck, fuck. <laughs> okay. That's great. Okay, so everything OpenGL was correct. It's just that uh, the rest type deduction was probably binding these as F64s, and we were assuming they were F32s, um, and that was fucking everything up. Okay, okay. Cool. So now we have a way to bind, cust like, at runtime, these, like, different vertices. So now if we change this to, like, if we make all of these 0 0.5 instead of 1.0 we should see a triangle that's half the size. We should. Nice. Okay, we're chilling, we're chilling, we're chilling. We're chilling. That took way too fucking long. Um, but now we are ready to move on. So how do we want to adjust this now? Let's just make sure that everything's kind of like in a reasonable state. So we can look at our vertex shader. He is got some input uniform angle, and he's got some like input vertex. Great. And then our fragment shader is just drawing white. So we're kind of chilling on both of those. Nothing in there is too complicated. Now, what I want to try next is I want to try maybe drawing these things as points. If I remember correctly, there's a, a GL draw points instead of triangles drill draw arrays you can maybe draw them as points or something gl points yeah here we go so right now they're drawing these three vertexes it's saying hey could you group these vertices that we're passing in in groups of three and then draw them as triangles what happens if we say hey can you draw some points instead 
Now what we should get is we should get the three points that make up the triangle, but like as individual dots. Great. But they're really fucking tiny. So I think there's a way to like set the point size as well. Geo point size. Uh, so I think that there's two ways to do this. If point size mode is enabled, you can do this, blah, blah, blah. But I think you can also ask for it within the shader, which I think might... No, this is probably fine. Specifies the rasterized diameter of points. If the point mode is disabled, this value will be used to rasterize points. Otherwise, the value written to the shading language will be built in variable GL point size when used. Ah, okay. So the point size specified by GL point size is always returned when blah, 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 blah. Okay. So I think we just don't really care about that. We probably don't need it in the shader. And I guess we just kind of want to set this externally. So maybe we'll say like GL point point size? Like why is this not is this not an, a function that I have available here? Point. Hmm, maybe not. Oh, I have this way to like call something related to point size. Is there another Another API that I'm supposed to call. This is old OpenGL API, so not useful. OpenGL set point size. <laughs> Adjust GL points size. Then you can set it in the vertex shader. Okay. I guess we'll do it that way if it's not giving it to us in the glow binding. So it's like GL enable glow points point size and i guess we do this like somewhere like here i don't know it doesn't matter i guess we should probably have some sort of like open gl initialization code somewhere and then we have like in here we say like gl point size equal to like 4.0 or something is that how this works we'll find out so if i make this like a thousand Not quite. I must have misread something. GL point size. Let's see. Size of rasterized points in pixels. Oh, it's program point size. I fucked up. It's enable program point size. Here we go. So now they're allowed to set it, and we should see the, these massive fucking blobs. Yep, they're so big that they're useless, so let's try going back down to like four or something. A little too small still i guess maybe that's fine maybe we do like 10 i don't know let's just i just want to i just want to get a feel we can always loop back okay now these are squares can i make the point circles gl point gl points circle like is this do i have to do some sort of uh like fragment shader calculations in here Draw circles using GL points. No, you can't. You can discard in the shader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have to do something like if my if my frag coordinate is too far from the point I'm looking at, which means that I probably have to forward the point position in screen space to the fragment shader. Right? Like that's kind of... Like something like uh, out vec to pause, and then here I have to say like pause is equal to GL position. Yeah, am I allowed to access GL position in the fragment shader? Shader, and then do I have to worry about this getting like interpolated? I can't remember. I can't remember what is. So he's checking center, blah, blah, blah. Oi, oi, oi. 
drawing round points using modern OpenGL. Like, I just want somebody to, like, give me the answer without me thinking too hard. So if the length of the coordinate is greater than 0 0.5... Oh, GL point cord. So GL point cord is... What? Is this, like, where I am in... Fragment language input variable. Coordinate of a fragment within a point. Oh, sick. This is exactly what I want. This is, okay, perfect, 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 perfect. So I don't need to do any, like, forwarding here. I can just say, like, in my fragment shader, hey, where the fuck am I in this point? Perfect. So I can go into my fragment shader and say, if GL, GL point cord dot x is greater than 0 0.5 or gl point cord dot y is greater than 0 0.5 this is going to be wrong uh no i want to do something more like uh if i have a circle what is the formula for a circle is uh x squared plus y circle circle formula I, it's so embarrassing that I don't have this off the top of my head. X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. So that's X squared plus Y squared is equal to R squared. And so I want to know if, like, if I want to set my radius to 0 0.5, I need to know if X squared plus Y squared is less than 0 0.5 is what I wanted to know, is how I check if I'm in the circle. Right, so I'm going to say, like, float R, R2 is equal to this times this plus uh, the same thing, but Y. And then we can say... Uh, if r squared is greater than 0 0.5 squared, like, fuck off. Something like this. I think. <laughs> that should give me circles, maybe? That doesn't look right. x squared plus y squared is equal to dot vv, by the way. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it is. Nice, that's pretty cool, useful. Um, but this doesn't look like it's working for some reason. Uh, can we make the points really fucking big? Just uh, just to get a better feel. Give me some big dots, please. So this is close. Um, but it looks like it's put the center at the top left of the point. So probably this is in point position might be like zero to one or something instead of negative one to one. Like I thought, uh, so we need to offset this a little bit. Uh, so we have, like, x. <laughs> uh, float x is equal to the point x plus 0 0.5. This will give us something. If it's in the range 0 to 1, this will now give us something in the range. What do we want? We want, like, 0 to 1 to go to... <laughs> uh oh s ranges from zero to one the point horizontally from left to right if geo point is lower left blah 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 otherwise if its origin is upper left yeah, yeah okay 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 so i mean i can just look at the circle formula it's x minus h squared y minus k squared so i just do float x is equal to x minus 0 0.5 and y is y minus 0 0.5, and then I do x times x and y times y. 
and then that should put me in the center, and then I need to change my radius to be 0 0.25 instead of 0 0.5 or something. No, 0 0.5 is still fine. Because that's half, radius being half the width of the whole thing is reasonable. Uh, he didn't like that. Because Y has been used uninitialized. Oh, because this is a GL point chord dot. Nice. Okay. Give it to me, baby. Come on, let's get some circles in here. Hell yeah, look at that! That doesn't look too bad. There's, you know, we could get crazy and start doing some anti-aliasing. Uh, but I'm not going to do that because... Fuck off. <laughs> you know? I'm just, we're just not going to do that. Um, okay. Use smooth stuff for smoother edges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, we, we could, we could, we could, we could, we could, but I'm not going to. I'm not, I'm not, it's just, we, we need to, if we do that, we're going to rabbit hole. It's going to take longer. We've already got an hour just to draw some circles on the fucking screen. And, uh, I wanted to like have a graph drawn. So we have to, we have to pick our battles. Uh, Okay. So let's go in here, and we're going to rename this guy. This First of all, let's put these in the fucking GLSL folder. Like, come on. What's happening here? What button did I press? Copy, paste. Okay. So now we need to go over here, and we need to go back into... De delete this buffer, delete this buffer, and here we have, like, res... Somewhere, and we want this to be in, like, GLSL. And then pretty clearly, our fragment shader... Uh, is now pretty clearly circle related. Uh, so maybe we do something linear fall off could be good enough. It would be cheaper. Oh, so you do you just like adjust the alpha relative to how far you are from the radius or something? Uh, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Even though I think it's easy. I know. I know. But we're just we have to we have to cut our losses. So we're going to call this a uh, circle fragment. Okay. Oopsies. Dot GLSL. And then I think this vertex shader is still kind of doing nothing that's like specific to circles. So we're chilling. But this fragment shader is. So uh, let's go back over here to our if biz. And uh, we want to look at our fragment shader. And we're going to call this circle fragment now okay so now we still run hopefully hopefully everything is fine we should be chilling nice okay so now let's maybe try to position our circles according to our graph seems reasonable so let's say uh render circles in correct positions okay so this guy shouldn't be called rotating triangle anymore uh, but also, fuck it. Helix editor on NixOS on Wayland. We're on NeoVim on NixOS on Wayland. Close. <laughs> close, close, close. Um, okay, so this guy, I guess, uh, our circle positions are defined one time on construction, so we don't have to worry about them, like, moving around. So I guess here, we can just say, here are our uh, circle positions. And we have to make a decision right now on if we want these to be in, uh, like, graph space, i.e., like, should these have, be have like, whole number integer positions, or should they be floating point OpenGL coordinates? Because uh, you have to do, like, the screen space is, like, 0 to 1 in OpenGL land, but our graph is, like, it just has, like, X and Y indexes. And probably working in X and Y indexes will be easier. Um, I believe that will be easier. So let's actually change what we're doing right now. We're going to say, um, specify coordinates, specify positions, specify circle positions in graph space, we'll call it. So what do we want to do here? Instead of uploading floats, we want to upload integers. So this guy is going to be What? He's going to say, I have six. Now these are going to be I-32s, I guess. And so let's say that we want them at like 
zero. If we're if we were to draw a triangle, we want this at like zero, one, and that the bottom left this would be like zero. This if this is x y, so we're gonna go one zero one x zero y for the top one. Then we're gonna go bottom left would be like. 0, 1, and bottom right would be like 0, wait, uh, 2, 2. I guess these are going to be 2s, not 1s. Maybe? So this is at halfway on x top y. This is at nowhere in on x bottom y, bo bottom right. Yeah, okay. Uh, so now we need to say, hey, these aren't floats. These are ints. And this should be size of I32 here now. And then we need to specify in our vertex shader. We now want to say, hey, these aren't vector2 inputs. These are iVec2s. And we have to convert these. So let's for now just say that the position is uh, invert... We have to convert this, uh, so we want to like divide by 3.0, I guess, 2.0. If we're saying like top left is zero, bottom right is two. Maybe we want to divide by three and add something, just to make sure that like the points are like in a reasonable spot or something. Let's just see what fucking happens. Surely this is gonna be fucking busted, right? Yeah, of course. What what else would I expect? So, let's see. So, this these guys should be, let's just assume, let's for now assume that we did everything right on the left here, which I'm very much not sure that I did, right? Uh, we expect here to get ve uh, vertices in the range of 0, 1, or 2 only. And we want to map those to negative 1 to 1. So we want to do like invert minus 1.0 over 2.0. And maybe we want to go over 3 so that they're kind of like more towards the center. You could also ask the hardware to normalize insta floats in the range 0 to 1 by changing the false in vertex attribute pointer. But you would need to know like then the normalization would be relative to like int, min, int, max, right? I think. Not 100% sure on that, but it's like it's not like it's like looking at the buffer and seeing what the maximum value in the buffer is. I wanted to find that later as like a uniform, as like an external input. Hey, cool stream. Hey, thanks. Uh, nice looks like the old Windows screen server. Yeah, on the right, that was like intentional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we th that was the inspiration for the thing on the right. Traditionally positive Y up. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, also, why does vertex attribute have a F32 suffix? That's also a very good point. <laughs> Vertex, attrib, pointer. Oh, interesting. Yeah, what the fuck is that? It's a really good point. Vertex, attrib, pointer, F32. Oh, there's a risk that you're shooting yourself in the foot by using N32 as an input. The hardware made float for floats. I thought that there's like some sort of like efficiency gain here that can be had, but I could be wrong. You're right that it might make more sense to use points, but it's just like in my head, it makes more sense for like the non open, like the the if all of my like math is relative to um like graph coordinates, it would be nice if the API boundary there was like okay, we'll do like the integer to float conversion per vertex on the GPU. That just feels like it would make everything easier for me. Uh, but I also it's very clearly not the case because i'm already fucking up but we'll, we'll see so vertex attrib attrib pointer so like what yeah oh vertex attrib pointer f32 okay yeah that does exist I, or i32 so why does he not like that oh probably because i've got the wrong number of arguments now index size data type normalization is gone yeah 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 so this goes away and now we're chilling okay let's try that Okay, okay, sick. So we have a circle somewhere. Uh, it's very much not clear where it is, but that's okay. 
So that, at least we have like something to work with, right? So say we just like divide by 10 here, what do we get? Weirdly, not that much movement. Uh, invert minus 1.0 over 10. So let's double check. Okay, let's just, let's start by just drawing one. We'll draw all of our vertices at zero, zero. Just because, oh yeah, because we're, we're binding. Oh yeah, okay, we'll, we'll draw everything at zero, zero. I just want to see, we should, we want to make sure that zero, zero is in the center of the screen. And this is not centered. So let's make, let's just draw the vertices the vertex as it is, zero, zero. Okay, that's centered. Uh, right, okay, that makes sense. So say, so let's do some like line along X now, just to make sure that like I understand the bindings. Right, so here we see first dot, second dot, and if we divide by like five here, we should see all three dots. Yeah, okay, cool, 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 cool. Uh, and then we, so now we just want to say, hey, what is our, like, max, or, like, X size, I guess? And then uh, we want to set that to however many points we have in our grid. So we should be able to say, hey, what is like the X size position? And let's set it to three for now. And then we also have to say in here, we have to use that thing. So this is gonna be over X size. And can I, I guess I can wanna cast that to a float. Probably. Uh, I fucked up some brackets somewhere, so 531. Oh, no. Uh, line 10. Oh, so this probably doesn't like this float cast. Is it, do I do float in GLSL like this? Is this how I cast? It's always so hard to remember. Every language is different. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then I need to like offset these guys so that zero is like fully on the left. So I want it to be like divided by max size times two minus max size over two or something. Something like that. It's like, uh, X core float X chord is equal to invert dot X. So this is in the range zero to X size. We want to map this to negative one to one. So yeah, we divide by float X size and this will put us in the range zero to one times two to put in the range one to two minus 1.0. There we go. And then here we say X chord and Y chord. And then we take in, I guess for now we'll do that the Y chord uses the same scaling factor because that'll just make it easier for now. But later this is gonna have to turn into like X and Y sizes individually. So now we should get two, oh, half circle on the left, half circle on the right. Uh, not quite, not quite. So what do we fuck up here? Uh, let's just put the Y coordinate as unconditional zero for now. And then what did I fuck up here where I expected, uh, zero to be the far left center. So fully on like the left edge, which is happening. But now the right is not fully on the right edge. Probably because this is, I've, I've set my X size to three and not two. Yeah, there we go. This is what I expected to see. Right. Because yeah, that, that'll make sense. That'll make sense. 
And so now if we wanted um, the thing at position to zero to be fully within and the thing at position two to be fully within, we need to uh, change this like normalization to be adjusted by point size over two, I guess. So we want this to now, instead of going negative one to one, we want this to go to uh, negative one plus point size over two to one minus point size over two. That's the new range. Which means that we need to do some sort of like, so when we divide by X size, we get, this is zero to one. Then we wanna adjust this to be so we still want to multiply by 2 here. So that's 0 to 2. But we need this to be like not 0 to 2. It's like 0 to 2. Oh, I guess we, we also need to know like the point size in like vertex space. That's a pain in my ass. Here's what we'll do instead. Here's what we'll do instead. We'll add 1 to the vertex. And add 2 to x size. And I think that puts, we just kind of give like a buffer of one vertex, like one point on either side. And I think that's probably fine. Good enough. Yeah, it's good enough. It's good enough. That's approximately one, two, three. Yeah, I think that looks about right. Looks about right. All right. So now... Y is a little bit busted here. Uh, because we need to do the same, like, trick here. And really, we should factor that function out. But I'm not going to for now, because I'm a lazy piece of shit. There we go. Okay. Okay. So now, now let's inject the circles when we construct this guy. So I guess we're going to say, how many X positions are we going to have? And how many Y positions are we going to have? And we can convert that into some buffer. Sure. Yeah, so our vertices... is going to be something related to like zero to y width and then we're going to take for each of those things for each y value we're going to go we're going to look at zero to x width uh-huh and then for each combination of y and x, we're going to have to inject a vertex. So this is going to be like 0 to x width map x is going to be a x, y, I guess. And then we just want to like flatten this as much as we can. So this should be some sort of like vector of F32. And do I need to like double flatten here? There's some way to do this where I, I I'm just I'm just not quite there. I think it's like uh into it or here maybe. Method call chain might not have the associate type mat flat map there's some we're so close we're so close cargo check so he cannot be built over iterators of array into iterators u size 2 maybe this is also a flat map here Oh, this should be U size here, like this. 
And I guess I want these as I32s, not U sizes. So I want this as uh, I32 here and as I32 here. There we go. Okay, so now we should have vertices that are kind of in grid positions in some way. And then we need to set the maximum size. We're going to say uh, grid size is going to be a I32, I guess. And we're just going to define it as uh, the larger of Y and X. Y width max X width. Something like this. Uh, which means that down here, we're going to say, hey, we're going to set the size to self.grid size. There we go. Cool. And so now, just when we construct this guy, we need to say, hey, uh, we want you to be args a len args b len size. Uh huh. And then there's like some like rust bullshit that we have to deal with. So here we can just stash those guys and shove them over here. Args a len, or a len here, b len here. So hopefully now we should see a grid uh, that's like kind of defined by the size of our inputs. These guys are mad. It's some like ownership bullshit. So we just kind of slap a little move on there. Okay. Down here, we need the number of elements that we draw to be much bigger than three. We need to draw however many elements that there are. Uh, so nom elements. I guess we need to store as well. And so nom elements is going to be a times B, like the, because we're drawing a full grid. So here we just need to store, uh, num elems is A times A len times B len as I think too. There we go. Something like this. Or it's X width times Y width here. Yep. And then down here we, already said we're going to draw this many elements instead of three, which should give us a useless piece of garbage. Great. But if we reduce the point size now, we should see a grid of points, I think. A little bit off, but... Overall, we're pretty close. I think it's because... Uh, we need our X size to be reduced by 1, I think. And then I think we're chilling. I think that's right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's close enough. You know what? We're not going to get picky. We are not going to get picky. Okay. Let's uh, add some lines to this graph. So the lines will probably need some sort of like second program, probably. Why do we do the plus ones in the shader again? I don't quite get it. Uh, it was something like, let's see if I can draw it. Uh, so I had like grid position was like zero to like grid max. So if you drew something at position zero, you would draw it like here. And if you drew it at grid max, you draw it here. And so I just like added ones so that like the, mi the minimum grid position was ones so that we would draw it here. And then I added to the grid max so that instead of like grid max ending up here, it ended up here. Just to, like give us like a little bit of buffer room on each side. Which was not clear when I did it, and is still not really super clear in my head, but it was, you know, something about that. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's pull out some of this, like, shader compilation stuff into a function, I guess. So, shader 
types to program. And these are going to take in the like frag vertex shader as a string and the fragment shader as a string. And it's going to return a, a glow program. And that's just going to do all of this stuff here. Because we're going to construct a second program now for line drawing, which is going to look very similar, except the fragment shader is going to be a little different, I think. We'll find out. He needs a glow context. And here it's vertex shader and fragment shader here. Uh-huh. Why doesn't glow context have all of this stuff? Is it has context? I'm missing something. What is like the type of GL here? Yeah, it's glow context. So why does this create shader not exist? It exists in this function. Ah, because I have to use glow has context. Like he's... We'll just stick this up the top, I guess. And this stuff has to be unsafe because he's working with memory directly. Uh-huh. Uh, we want to use glow self and has context as this. Maybe we'll do it like that. Glow program. Oh, he's saying that I didn't return that thing. So here we need to make the program and return it. So here we say create a program, please. Boom. And then we return the program here. Alright. So now we can say fuck yo shaders. Fuck all this. And we're going to say let program is equal to shaders to program using the vertex shader source and the fragment shader source. as well as the GL context, of course. Now when we run this, we should still see some dots. Chillin'. But now this gives us the flexibility to uh, draw some, like have a separate shader for the lines. So I think this is very clearly a vertex shader for circles. Or this is a sh vertex shader that converts from grid space to screen space. So really, this could be reused for the lines, I think. As long as we specify the lines in grid space, we're chilling. Fragment shader, uh, he's doing some circle bullshit. So I guess we will create a new fragment shader. So we'll say... Uh, 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 oh god, my brain, it's melting. I wanted to call it line fragment, but I guess, like, technically it could be used for anything. But we'll just call it line fragment. Fuck it. And this is gonna just be the same thing here, except he's gonna be, like, dumb as fuck. He's just gonna be like, hey, white, please, unconditionally. I don't give a fuck. Uh, yeah, okay. So now we should be able to say that in our diff viz, we now will have, like, two, two programs. One is the circle program. So I guess we'll rename this to circle program. And then we'll make a new program for lines. And the line program is going to look very similar to the circle program. Uh, except he's going to use the fragment, the line fragment shader source. So this guy uses circle. Sir Uk, I guess is what I called it because I can't fucking type. And then down here we have line program like this. And I think our buffer data layout is like the same for both, so I don't think we really need to worry about that. And then just when we paint, we're going to bind our circle program. Yep. And then we're going to bind our line program. Set the same attributes. I don't know if you have to rebind the vertex array. Probably not. And then we're just going to draw array of... Oh, we do need a new vertex array. Because the vertex array right now is for the points. 
But now we want to make it so that it's for the lines. I guess we could reuse the same array buffer and just draw a bunch of line segments. I think that'll be okay. Okay. Uh, so we set our attributes, and then we just do the same fucking shit. Except we here we say, please draw line. If we draw lines between each point, we're only going to get horizontal lines. And then we're going we're gonna to get like zigzags as well. So this isn't what we want, but let's just draw this for now and like see what we get. Yeah, okay, okay. Ah, okay, so we drew... Uh, we took each point and we drew a line between them, which is fine. Uh, and this just isn't what we want. Okay, so we want, like, a line buffer as well. So we'll call this the uh, circle array. And then we just need a line array. We have to call this the circle buffer. And then we need a line buffer as well. Okay. So, circle buffer comes from, we'll rename this guy too, circle buffer. And we'll rename vertex array to uh, circle array. Okay. Clearly, we need to abstract some sort of, like, I want to take data, turn data into buffer and vertex array. And is this going to be, like, the same? It kind of is, right? So maybe we'll just take in um, something that's, like, points to VBO, VAO. That seems reasonable. And so this is going to return a glow buffer and glow array. And I think then we can kind of say... We do just everything here. So he clearly needs to take in some vertices and a glow context. And here, our vertices are going to be a I32 slice. I think that's like kind of what we're working with. So here we have to say, vow is this thing, vabo is this thing, and then we return vabo and vow. Yup. Okay, and so can we, we're going to assume right now that these are like uh, 2D points, so maybe we'll, we'll maybe be, get a little, two, uh, on say function, I32 2D points to the bow vow. And then we can kind of say this like binding of stuff is like, it's okay for it to live like this. I'm okay with that. Okay, so we'll say let circle buffer circle array is equal to I32 2D points to Vabo Vabao, and this is going to be vertices. Okay. And he also needs the GL context. And then we delete all of this. Okay. And then for now, we'll just reuse. The circle buffer and circle array for line buffer and riot line array just because uh i want to get something that compiles and we can like look at an example of so this guy wants to bind the line array and the line buffer okay oh okay cargo run so now we should see the same thing that we drew before Great, we've got a bunch of circles and a bunch of lines. Okay, and now we want to feed the line buffer with, like, our other shit. So, here, we can do something like let line vertices equal to some vec of i32s. And I guess we're going to do something like 0 to y width is i32. 
we are going to map these to two points each, one at the far left and one at the far right. So this is going to be something like, for each y, we're going to take, we're going to make a zero y, or a zero, yeah, zero y to x width y. We're going to draw this line. And then this is going to be collected into a bunch of line vertices. Okay, so this is going to take in the line vertices like this. And so now we should see a bunch of horizontal lines from the top to the bottom. Not bad! Not bad! Okay, so this is going to be uh, x width minus 1. Uh, and this has to be in brackets or something. Okay. Hello, I'm completely lost. Yeah, sorry, I'm not doing as good a job as I would like to at, like, describing what's happening as I'm going along. But especially because I'm struggling myself with, like, grasping it all as I go. Uh, there's a lot to take in, but I'll try my best. Um, so we have this way to draw lines now. We're, like, feeding this up to the GPU, and so now we want to just add to this group of line versus the vertical ones as well. So we kind of want to do something like, maybe this is like the, you can like, we can get crazy here. We can get crazy. So we can say y vertices iterator is this guy, is like this iterator like this. And then we have like the x vertices iterator, which goes from 0 to x width. For each x, he's going from x to, at x position y0 to, uh, X position height. And then we're gonna like combine these guys. So we're gonna say like I want a vertice ver I want a vector of lines that have a bunch of I32s in them, and they're gonna be something like the Y vertices. And then there's a way to like chain iterators together. This is chain. And then we collect these guys into a vector. So I think that this should give us vertical and horizontal lines. Hell yeah, brother. That's sick. That's sick. So we're we're definitely getting somewhere. So now I think what I want to add on next is uh, the diagonal lines. So uh, within our algorithm, in the original visualization... Uh, it had, like, we were looking at, you know, points like this on a grid. Uh, each of these guys are connected horizontally and vertically. But then, if there is, like, if the source string is, like, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, we would have, like, diagonal lines here, where in any condition where each of, like, from the left and the right, we have the same value we draw a diagonal there. So we need to find a way to tack those diagonals on. So what is the play there? We had this code already for our old visualization. So what did we do there? We had a function draw diagonals and he just said for y, for x, if the thing in the left is the thing on the right, we draw the line segment. And so now we're kind of saying, well, we're going to feed those in. So it's going to be something like maybe instead of passing in x at y width here, we would pass in our actual things. So a is going to be some sort of slice of things, and b is going to be some sort of slice of things. And the only condition that we need on here is that the thing is comparable by some, by like an equals equals operator. Here we can say let y width is equal to b len and uh, let x width is equal to a len so that all the previous code keeps working. And when we construct this guy, we're going to pass in instead of a len and b len. Uh, he is going to be uh, 
we're going to pass in args A and args B. There we go. And then here we pass in rotating triangle. Okay. Okay, so now if we want to find the diagonal lines, we basically have to make a new iterator. And he's going to look a lot like the draw diagonals function. So he's going to go for... It's going to be what? We're going to go from 0 to y width. Uh, then for each of those, we're going to go from 0 to x width. And we're going to pair those with a y. So we're going to say... Uh, y or x, y like this. And we are going to... First of all, is this like an iterator that's valid? Uh, it's like map x, x, y like this or something. Doing things with iterators is so much fucking harder. Okay. So now we're going to have like x, y positions. And we're just going to do the same conditions. We're going to say map filter map. So we're going to take in an x and a y. And it's going to say if y is less than b len and x is less than a len and a and b get y idx or y is equal to a get x. Uh, we are going to return the diagonal. So here we're going to say sum hold on. So these are dot dot equals iterators. Ah, that's the trick here. So they're not they're not iterating to length, they're iterating to the maximum position. And then they're allowed to compare with y plus 1. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay. So they're saying here. Uh, it's because 0, 0 in the data is actually 1, 1 in the grid. So that's why they're doing like plus 1s here. So we can say uh, let x end is equal to x plus 1. I guess we just push the line. So here we say sum... We go from x, y, to x plus 1, y plus 1. Yes, and otherwise, we have nothing to iterate here. Uh-huh, and then we can flatten this, I think. So now we have another iterator that should give us diagonals here. Which means that we have, like, y vertices, x vertices, and the diagonals. Which he doesn't like, uh, because these guys need to be as you saw, as either twos everywhere. Like this. Chillin'. Chillin'. Okay, so let's just see if we get something that looks kind of sane when we do this. Close. Very close. So I think that we have a couple of problems here. It's a uh, x width is actually going to be plus one here because it's the length of the the grid is one larger than the number of elements because there's like a zero zero position that's like I haven't started iterating either yet. And then here, these are no longer x with and y. This should be a uh, b len and a len, I think. And that looks pretty reasonable. Let's do this with like less. Let's let's feed in some like more reasonable data. So we're gonna say uh, a is one, two, three, four. 
and B is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 4, 3. And so what we should see is we should see 1 and 2 here. They have their diagonals, which is great. 1, 2, 3, 4. But now we should see some more diagonals on... Um, we've got a mistake on... I believe it should be 1, 2, 3, 4. We see diagonals for 1 and 2 on both. But then 3 and 4 should have some diagonals associated with them too. I think here and here, which we're not seeing. So there's a bug there. Um, maybe this was Y width and X width. Maybe I just fucked this up. No. Uh, okay, so what we can do is we can, uh, for each of these, we can like print line X and Y. And we can say, hey, we found it. We can say, match, baby. And then maybe we even say print line A get x and b get y so that we can see what we're what we're missing here uh so let's see here we have this should be outside of quotes and this should we should say here just we'll draw some debug things i don't know fuck it how can you focus so much i've been watching for hours and you never get distracted uh well we kind of have the benefit here where uh i have like the the fact that i'm on stream and i only have to stream for a couple hours um really helps like i couldn't do this all day right like we so we're, we're kind of uh and and because i i have like this like target where i have this position that i know i'm trying to get to uh it kind of it just kind of makes it easier kind of makes it easier But yeah, I mean, it's not like this when I'm like working at my job, which I don't have right now. But like, if I if I were working, it wouldn't be like this, because when you have to go for eight hours, it's just like way too fucking much. Um, also, it helps if like I get in like this state where I'm like really, like I guess like I I really get like excited is maybe not quite the right word, but close enough. Uh, I get like excited about what I'm working on, and so it's like easy for me to lock in, as long as I like keep that excitement, and so. I have the benefit where where I get to pick what I work on and what I'm trying to produce uh, doesn't have to have any, like, real value, right? So the only thing that I have to optimize for is do I care? And so, like, since I'm always getting to work on stuff I care about, then, like, it's easy to stay focused, if that makes sense. Um... Okay, let's see what happens if I said B is 1, 2, 3, 4. The exact same string. We're still only seeing two diagonals here. Where I, I would expect to see a full straight line here. So what happens when we have like X3, Y3? We see four on both. Okay. And if we see like X0, Y0, we see some of both. So we're, the diagonals here are actually the right length. I think what's actually happening is we, we are, we're not storing the number of diagonals here. And we're only drawing the first ones. So this should be line vertices len here. Or num, this should be num lines. And then we need to draw when we're drawing these guys. We need to just draw the correct number of lines. So when we're painting, it's not num elements here for the line buffer. It's num lines. And here we need to store num lines down here. Num lines is an i32. So this is, has to be as i32. And probably this whole time is actually working correctly. We just, uh, there we go. Okay. So there we see one long straight line. And so now we can go back here and we say, I want one, two, four, three here. And now we see that this is definitely what I expected. I expected a diagonal at the top for one and two matching up and then two extra diagonals for the three and four matches. Pretty sick. Pretty sick. Okay. Um, I'm going to do one more thing against my better judgment and try to flip the graph because I try to keep these guys at around two hours because like I post them to YouTube and if I were to watch this content, which I do, I do watch these back because I want to make sure that I'm like progressing and like what I produce is something that I think is valuable, whatever, blah, blah, blah. doesn't really matter. When I watch, um, something that's like longer than two hours is like 
a lot. Where like two hours is kind of like the limit of what I'd be willing to watch in a YouTube VOD. So we're kind of in this like shitty case where I, in reality, I should be optimizing for Twitch and YouTube separately. But because I'm a fucking lazy piece of shit and like <laughs> the, the goal, I'm also right now optimizing for uh, self-enjoyment because this is like fun vacation year. Um, we limit ourselves to two hours on stream so that we can just upload those videos to YouTube with no effort and hopefully still have them be like at least somewhat useful. Um, so all that to say, limiting myself to two hours, we've got five minutes left. Let's do one more thing. And I think let's just, let's make sure that like the, the top left is the top left, which means in our vertex shader experiment or vertex shader, we just need to invert these X, these Y coordinates. So I think we just say negative here. We go left to right and go top to bottom. And now hopefully this goes top to bottom, nice. And actually what's kind of funny here is we kept that rotating triangle code in from the beginning so we can actually rotate the graph, which is like, why the fuck would we ever want to do that? Uh, but we can. <laughs> so we kind of have all the pieces here to, we're, we're actually quite, quite close. Um, the only thing that we have to do now is we need to draw in the algorithm progress uh, and then add in some like pan tilt zooming stuff. So I think I think that's enough that it will be fun to do this again on a second stream. Um, and then maybe we'll get to the point where we have we can visualize like a metric fuck ton of data without like running into major problems. I guess also the other thing like there's a couple other things we want to do. We want like the background of this, we probably want it to be full screen. We probably want it to like scale we scale with window size and be like transparent. We need to add back our like diff visualization stuff. So I think there's enough to go a second stream on this. Uh, but I think this is like pretty good progress. I was hoping to get a little farther. Um, but this like 30 minute chunk on just trying to draw data really took some time. And I, I, you know, that's the kind of thing that you, that I always need to like, remember is, uh, programming is often like when things go well, you can really just like plow through a lot of shit. Like a two hour focus block is like actually a lot, but that's only if you don't hit problems. And when you hit problems, all of a sudden that two hour chunk, it can explode into like a week, right? It's like so hard to like fucking guess how long something's going to take. So I should be happy with this level of progress. I think that we we almost we're like almost finished to be honest, and uh, we should yeah, that's pretty pretty sick, pretty sick. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you like what you saw, I stream most days at I've been saying around one or two Pacific time, but in reality, it, as of recently, it's been pretty consistently two o'clock so we stream most days around two o'clock pacific time for around two hours so if you're online in the hours of like two to four and you want to swing by see what we're working on uh feel free we've been kind of covering a variety of topics right now we're working on this like diff algorithm as a way to improve our git gui and so now you see that we're hitting like some like open gl stuff uh we're also working on like a terminal emulator which i eventually have to jump back on uh, and there's like, you know, other projects we've been doing where like virtual, virtual file systems, 3D, OpenGL, stream intro screen, like operating system from scratch, uh, neural networks, web dev. We kind of cover like whatever the fuck I feel like working on is kind of the trend here um, with probably a bias towards lower level. Um, if you want to see any of the previous stuff, it's all on YouTube and there's a YouTube link in the Twitch description. If you can't see that YouTube link, it's the same as the Twitch name just on YouTube. There's a GitHub link in the Twitch description, same name again, uh, where all of the code eventually ends up. And if you're watching on YouTube, there should be a Twitch link in the YouTube description. I think that's all I got to plug. Uh, thanks for watching guys. And if you want to swing back, catch you on the next one. Bye.